Okay, so in this video, we will evaluate, if possible, this definite integral that is an improper integral of type 1, as we have an infinite range of integration, and since we go from 1 to infinity, and over both of these intervals, ln and x squared are both continuous, and x squared is not 0, ln of x over x squared is continuous. Both are also positive, so we can look at the geometry behind this improper integral. So you could, using your first and second derivative, you could easily sketch the graph of ln of x over x squared. I will leave this up to you, but here's what you should obtain. It's a rather interesting curve. At 1, ln of 1 is 0 over 1, so you'll get 0. And the function initially increases. Then you have a, an absolute maximum. Then it starts decreasing. There's an inflection point, And then the graph and the limit will become smaller and smaller and smaller. And the curve shrinks to 0. To give you a few more details, the critical point occurs exactly at the square root of e. And that is approximately 1.65. And the inflection point where the curve changes from concave down to concave up, we can say is about here. This occurs at e to the 5 over 6. And that is approximately 2.3. And you have in the limit a horizontal asymptote that is y equals 0. And this is the graph of ln of x over x squared from 1 to infinity. As for us, this is the interval of interest. So again, as the function is positive from 1 to infinity, this represents geometrically the exact area below this curve from 1 to infinity. So once again, because we have an improper integral of type 1 with an infinite upper bound of integration, we are asking for the area of this infinitely long region, of course, if the area exists. Well, as always, this is a two-step problem. We first go from 1 to t, And this is, again, because if you want to evaluate the definite integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus, you need a continuous function check over a finite interval. So we have to stop at t. And this will give us the exact area under a curve from 1 to t. As we want the whole thing, we have to then let t approach positive infinity. And now again, we have a two-step problem. Now that we have a continuous function over a finite interval, both conditions are met. And so for this definite integral, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Once we have evaluated this integral, then we can let t approach infinity. But for now, we're finding the area under our curve from 1 to t. And we know that all we need is the antiderivative. So let's first find the antiderivative of ln of x over x squared separately. Once we have it, then we'll go back to our integral. So how do we find this antiderivative? Well, if it were ln of x over x, it would be a simple u substitution letting u be ln of x. But as we have ln of x over x squared, a u sub will not work. But if I rewrite ln of x over x squared as ln of x times x to the negative 2 dx, then you can see this will be doable using a 
uh, using sorry uh, integration by parts, we let u be ln of x and dv be all that's left over. And if you recall, integration by parts says that the integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of b du. So we're missing our du and we're missing our v. Well, let's find our du. u is ln of x. So the differential of, the, of u, du, is the differential of ln of x. Well, the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x times, of course, dx. So we have our du. Of course, to go from dv to v, we have to integrate. So v is the integral of dv. And our choice of dv is x to the negative 2 dx. Power rule, add 1 to the exponent, divide by the exponent. And recall, when you apply integration by parts and you find your v, you do not need to add the constant of integration. And if we simplify, of course, this will give us negative 1 over x. And now we're good to go. We have our v and our du. So let's see. uv, ln of x times negative 1 over x. So that's negative ln of x over x. Minus the integral of v, negative 1 over x. du times 1 over x dx. And now we can see we'll have a much simpler integral than the original one as the ln of x has disappeared. We can simplify here negative negative is a positive and instead of writing 1 over x squared thinking again of the power rule I will write x to the negative 2. I can now use the power rule x to the minus 1 over negative 1 plus c. I will of course simplify here. And I can combine this over a single fraction. This is negative, the ln of x plus 1, over x plus c. And now that we have our antiderivative, we can go back and evaluate the definite integral of ln of x over x squared from 1 to t. Let's recall first the initial improper integral. And now we will apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, as again we have just found the antiderivative of the function that we are trying to integrate. So the antiderivative from 1 to t Let's plug in. So we have what? This function when x is t, so the negative ln of t plus 1 over t minus the antiderivative at 1, but minus minus is plus. Ln of 1 is 0. So we have 1 over 1, which is simply 1. Well, 1 is a constant, so all we have now is 1, and we can factor this negative, minus the limit, as t goes to positive infinity, of ln of t plus 1 over t.
Well, this is a non-trivial limit as both the numerator and the denominator are approaching infinity as t approaches infinity, but that's actually good news. Since we have an infinity over infinity case, we can find this limit using L'Hopital's rule. So we have 1 minus this stays there. The limit as t approaches infinity. And if you recall L'Hopital's rule says you replace the numerator by its derivative. If you differentiate ln of t plus 1 with respect to t, you'll get 1 over t plus 0, so it's just 1 over t, over the derivative of t, which is 1. So in the end, you have a rather simple limit. One over t over one is just one over t, and as t goes to positive infinity, one over t shrinks to zero. So in the end, we're left with one. So the improper integral converges and is exactly equal to one. If we go back to the geometry of the problem, this means that we have this infinitely long region that is a region bounded by the curve ln of x over x squared from 1 all the way up to positive infinity. And even though this region is infinitely long, and a rather interesting region at that, its area is exactly equal to 1. So once again, this is again a very neat conclusion. We have this really nice infinitely long region which has finite area exactly equal to 1. And that's it.